What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac. Welcome back to Big Bike BMX. I'm super stoked today because I've got my friend Kevin from Cruising in the 808. Kevin, it is so I'm so <laughs> stoked. We've been talking about doing this for a long time, dude. Since yeah. since I think before Dirty Fest, we talked about doing this, and then we talked about it at Dirty Fest, and I'm like, man, this is the time. Uh, appreciate you being so generous with your time because we were going to do this last night, and then. I had a last minute ride oh. that I got invited to and I was like, I have to go ride. So uh, appreciate it so Absolutely. much making time. So oh, all right. to be here, man. I I have been following you guys for God, I feel like I'm just trying to th- I was thinking about this when when I was waiting for you to join, dude. I'm like, man, what was our first interaction? And I remember just being like, My God, these guys are posting like ride videos at at uh uh like dusk you know and it like yeah. sunset every night it's like a bike ride in hawaii and i was like dude this is insane i remember the first time i saw it i was like i shared it i literally grabbed it i copied it sent it to i think craig todd lyons and like just a couple other people like dude check this out like daily daily rides of you know sunsets in hawaii this is amazing you know yeah and- i kind of remember you reposting like one of my pictures because i i started to do like these behind the bars photos yeah. where i put the bars because i wanted to have something with a bike in it and so and of course we live in hawaii so we got to make use of the of the scenery right so right go on these rides and we have certain spots that i'd want to film something on i'd like pull my camera behind my bar so that i could see the 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 scenic you know scenery and all that stuff but then have the bars in it right and then you posted it and i was like holy crap like isaac reposted one of my pictures i was like stoked that day (laughs) dude so rad yeah i loved it man and and you guys started like you and you and bernie started the channel i'm gonna i want to get into the whole history of like like your youtube presence and how it all started um but dude so were you were you like did you grow up in hawaii your whole have you spent like your whole life in hawaii Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm half Japanese, half Irish. My uh, my mom came from New York. She was a nurse and uh, graduated from nursing school and decided, you know, why don't we work in Hawaii for a little bit? You know, it's such a beautiful place. They came out here on a vacation after graduation and then decided to to look for a job after that and our island was one of the first islands that <clears throat> she she looked at got a job here my dad is japanese american um his parents came from japan and they worked in the in the plantation fields here and he grew up here he was he was born and raised here met my mom and then my mom never left and so that's that's why i kind of have this this mix of, of races but yeah i was born born and raised here in hawaii um Grew up in the heyday like you of, of BMX. You know, we were on our bikes just all day, every day. That was our freedom. Uh, got into BMX as a kid. Um, started with a mongoose. You know, I had the I had the cheapest, crappiest mongoose with the heaviest rims and not <laughs> ideal for racing. But I love that bike, right? And uh, yeah, just kind of raced, but couldn't do really much with that. Um, I couldn't convince my dad to buy me alloy rims with a free wheel hub, you know, no matter what I told him about racing like that, I can't race with these, with, you know, these, these coaster brakes, like there's just no way, you know, <laughs> and he's like, well, then go buy a bike. Then if you want another bike, go buy it. And so I, I um, got a paper route and then raised money, raised, raised enough money to buy a Diamondback Silver Streak. And then that became oh, my, there you my go. first race bike yeah and then from then on i went into a kuahara so i was on a kuahara laser light and i raced probably from i would say probably from middle so i I started my first race was when i was in like elementary school but i didn't do it that much just because i just didn't have the bike and then once i got the the diamond back um i started racing again and uh raced until i was about 15 or so when i got my license and then the license just killed everything else you know It? it was like yeah, it was like you couldn't take a girl out on a bike, but you could take a girl out on a in a car. So I was like, uh, the bike's gonna go on the side, you know. And uh yeah, but Bernie, Bernie and I like <clears throat> we've been friends since elementary school. I have pictures of us in the same elementary classroom. We grew up together, we were in Boy Scouts together, we hung out together. We were, when we were in high school, we fixed cars together. 
Um, we just had our little crew, you know, of, of friends. Uh, and I was really blessed to have just a good group of guys to hang out with, you know, in high school. Yeah. I I think that that story is so universal. Like it's, you know, you Yeah. had your you had your buddies. For me it was the same way. Like it was I mean, we, we my first real BMX bike I always talk about was the Toby Henderson uh Henderson hauler from SE, which is really just a restickered Murray. I thought it was. And um the the like my best friend, I remember Christmas morning, I I walk out, dude, and I was like I'm Thrown BMX bike. This is real. Had a free will. And to me, the same thing. Free will and a handbrake meant this is BMX. That's what you like. Coast coaster brake was not. And uh so I remember I was like so stoked, dude. I called my my best friend. His name is Adam. I called him that morning. I was like, motherfucker, I just got a chrome BMX bike, you know? And he's Let's like, go ride. yeah, he's like, so did I. I was like, no way. I was like, what did you get? He's like, I got an SE Racing Henderson Hauler. It's chrome and Oh, blue. no, he got the same bikes. He got the same one, dude, but he got a better color. I was like, ah. But uh, that's when I realized, like, our parents were in, like, cahoots about it. And it was rad, dude. I mean, That's cool, like, though. yeah, dude, it was it was amazing. Like, I, I can still feel the stoke if I really think about it. You know what I mean? I live in an apartment. I was single, like, single mom. So we live Yeah. in an apartment. I remember carrying that thing downstairs and I was like, this is so light compared to my other bike. My other bike, I couldn't even lift up, you know? Mm. And I was just like, dude, so this one, I was like, Yeah. let's go. So much fun, dude. And it was that, dude. It was like, like my best friend had a Predator. He had a Schwinn Predator. Um, and it, dude, we just like mobbed around the, the neighborhood, just the three of us thinking we were Yeah. like every, every city had a, a click of Goonie friends or Yes. Yeah. Like Yeah, stand you're right. every, You're right. every weekend was, or every day was stand by me for in the eighties. If you were like a kid, Yeah, well, boy you're right. or girl stand by me was every day. Um, you know, Yeah. it's just what it was. Yeah, it was it was amazing how back then, you know, like the summer would come and the summer felt like it lasted for a year. Like, you know, you you back then, like our school system. You know, we didn't go, we didn't go back to school till September. Now in Hawaii, we go back to school in like the beginning of August, you know, so Yeah. it's not the same, but we had like a full three months. Right. And I just remember the summers just feeling like they lasted forever. We'd, we'd get up early, you know, I'd ride over to Bernie's house and then we would just hang out and ride all over town. And we really wouldn't come home until the lights came on. on the street or when I had like my time was usually like six o'clock. My dad, my mom worked at the hospital. So she worked, you know, in the evening. So my dad was a guy that, you know, made dinner for us and stuff. And he was like, just be home by dinner. And so, yeah, we'd be out all day and my parents wouldn't care. Like where, where we were, Hey, did you get fed? Did you eat anything? <laughs> None like of it was that. like, none of that. Like they didn't even care. As long as we came home, it was fine. So it was Yeah. really, it was a good time to be a kid, you know? Yeah. Do you know what's wild to me is uh, I, I I love watching like true crime documentaries as an adult. And Okay. I look back, dude, and I watch like all these like true crime stories about the 80s. And I'm like, it was like just take a kid, free take a kid, you know, like. chapter you know what i mean like kids were stolen all the time and Yeah. like legit like legit stolen like kidnappings happened all at least in california it happened all the time i was like we're like i am so close to being stolen every time i leave this house and the fact that like we just cruised through that like our parents were just like i'd nah, be home whenever and you know we were on our own dude like kids we were drinking Yeah. Oh, yeah. out of hose like get your own food Yeah. i remember Yeah. Me and my buddies, we would decide, like, man, it's time to go eat. Like, I'm hungry. None of us would have money. So we would literally go do flatland tricks in front of Burger King on Lodi Avenue and just put a hat down until people Until threw you got enough some money money. to go inside and get a hamburger. Dude. That's how we <laughs> That's awesome. that's how we ate every single day, dude. We were just like, it worked. But dude, it I was don't rad, even you know. I don't even remember eating. I don't like I don't remember I'm trying to think back like, you know, I left I don't even know if I ate before I left the house, but I'm thinking like lunch, we must have ate somewhere, but I don't, I don't even recall eating. It was just just riding the bikes and No, having dude. a good time. Finding ramps, like we have Yeah. different um, communities on our island and they're, they're within, you can ride, 
you know, in our main town of Lihue, there's a there's a couple of places where you could get to. It's a little bit of a ride, but we could get to. And they would have they would, like you said, there'd be the Goonie squads like in in Puhi, which is a which is a neighborhood. There's a there'd be a you know group of us in in Lihue in our main town, and then Hanamalo, which is another um, local town. Like they'd have those you know the kids from that area, and each each area would have like their own jumps and stuff, their own dirt ramps. So then we would kind of just you know go wherever. Hey, is people hanging out. Let's go see if anyone's at that jump. You know, we'll ride over there, and and it was just a great time to be a kid. Yeah. No phones. No phones, just no riding phone. and hoping you found yeah. the spot. Yeah, hoping you found everybody. I kind of wish we had phones just so that we could see better pictures of the bikes that we used to have because that's what I miss is just like, I, you know, I'll go to some place like, you know, we visited. I, I, got, a, I got a chance to check out Gary from the BMX Museum and, and I checked out his space where he has just hundreds of bikes and looking at parts and stuff. I was like, oh, my God, I forgot about that, you know. So it was, it was just, it's just a cool thing to kind of like see things and then it triggers memories and then, you know, kind of takes you back. Yeah, absolutely, dude. So tell me about how the big bike stuff started for you guys. Like you, yeah, like you were BMXing in the 80s, like all of us, right? I'm assuming you kind of, you kind of touched on it, like cars happen, girlfriends, yeah. life happens. Yeah. Let's, let's fast forward to like, what, what was the first big BMX that you saw? Well, what happened was, okay, so I've, I've loved being on bikes my entire life. So even when I, when I graduated from school and became a teacher, I bought like a GT mountain bike and I would like, that would be some of my exercise. Like after I would get out of class, I would, you know, bring, I might bring the bike to work and ride on the path, or I might go home and then ride around the neighborhood. So I always liked having a bike around. And then in my forties, somehow I got, I was, I got bitten by the mountain bike downhill bug. So then I bought a Trek full suspension bike and connected with some friends here on the Island. And we rode, you know, mountain trails and stuff. And it was super fun. It kind of gave me those memories of being back on a BMX. And, you know, I thought I could handle jumps like I could as a kid and as an adult. Nope. Can't do that anymore. You know, right. when I would when I'd fall down and eat it, I'd jam my shoulder. And then because I was in my 40s, it was like, oh, like I had to go and get physical therapy. And it just was like, ah, oh, it was just so much. I mean, I loved it, but then it was also painful. You know, <laughs> I just had to really be the slow guy in the back, not really being the guy that jumps over gaps and all that kind of stuff. And I was fine. But then um, kind of paused for a while, then COVID happened. And then one of the only things you could really do in COVID was like to get out of the house during that lockdown was you could exercise, right? So dusted off the mountain bike and just started riding every single day, just and just rekindle that love again for just riding, you know, I have three kids, I have a family. So like family life kind of prevented a lot of that stuff, you know, when I was younger, but then, you know, being able to get back on the bike again, it was just, it was just awesome. So I would just start riding, you know, around my neighborhood. And one day I run across Bernie and one of his coworkers and he's riding a mountain bike. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like you're, you're riding again too. And he's like, yeah, we've been riding for like, we ride every morning, whatever. And I was like, we got to get together. And so from then on, we just planned rides together. We would ride every week and um, just started like, you know, falling in love with, with bikes again. And then I had always wanted to buy like a big BMX bike. Like I had seen the big rippers and but on our island, we don't have a bike shop that stocks those. I would have to go to Oahu and I just never had a chance because I wanted to like sit on one and see how it felt and stuff. But when the pandemic hit, I was like, oh, I'm just going to buy one. What the hell? I'm just going to buy one sight unseen. I'm just going to pick one up. The bike factory on Oahu um, was able to ship a bike to my island and it was pretty cheap. So I was like, okay, I'll just buy the Big Ripper. I saw the Arctic White and I was like, you know, bought it, picked it up. And I was like, this is awesome. Like everything I remembered from back in the day, a lot of that stuff all came back. And I'm looking at this bike that's easier for me to ride. It's bigger, right? But I can still put parts on it. Like if I want to go and 
you know, do, do other stuff. I can, I can change grips. I can, you know, work on the brakes or whatever. And so I started doing research, right? Within a month, I bought a monster quad. So I had two bikes within a month. And then that's where I came across your channel. Cause I was like looking online, like what, what is out there for me to see? And you were like one of the first people I saw. And I was, I just dove into all of your videos, right? All the stuff that you were working on with the free wheels, showing people how to change, you know, the, the, the free wheels in the back, doing different things. And I, we just got hooked, you know, Bernie was the same. He was, he was still using his mountain bike, but he was putting some parts on it. And then he surprised me one day. He bought one of the Hutch, um, 26, 26 inch Hutch frames. Didn't tell me anything. We'd be on these rides and he'd be asking me like, Hey, did you see Hutch came out with the, and I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome if we got one. He's like, yeah, you know, it would, what kind of parts would you put on it? Right. So we're right. talking as we're riding, <laughs> we're just like shooting this shit. Like, like what kind of like, yeah, oh, we should put, yeah, these kind of wheels and these, th this kind of bar or whatever. And then that whole time he's freaking in the, going in the background and he's buying all this stuff. Right. And he buys it, builds it up. And I come over one day to go ride. And this bike is sitting outside and I'm like, what the hell? Like you freaking guy, like you've been holding out on me, bro. He had his, his, his beautiful 26 Hutch. And from then on, we were just, we just started to like, um, you know, document rides. And one day we were doing some, some upgrades to the monster quad. And I was like, why don't we just film this? You know, maybe somebody might want to, might want to um, check this out. Right. We filmed it and it was, you know, Bernie doing the wrenching and I was behind the camera and it just clicked with people. Like we were just talking about, you know, stuff from the past and we were just talking about the parts and, you know, reminiscing and, and connecting with stuff that we've done. And I don't know, people just kind of enjoyed seeing that. And then once that happened, then we realized, okay, now maybe we're onto something. We need to start doing more of these build videos because prior to that i was kind of like i just started the channel because i just wanted to share this this rekindling of my love for bmx and so like i you know i made my own videos i sat in my backyard i like hey here's the new here's a night bike company stem and here's a night bike company seat post clamp and i was doing all this stuff by myself just filming like you know just short small videos right right but then once once bernie and i hooked up and started doing stuff together you know, we realized, yeah, like this is, this is fun. And, you know, Bernie started getting into it and that's kind of taken to us where, to where we're at right now. Nice dude. Yeah. I, here's what I like about the formula that you guys have. Like it really does feel like I'm just a, another dude hanging out in the garage with y'all while you're building a bike. That's what makes it so endearing. Cause it's like, you know, it's, it's not like it's a, you know, perfection build you know what i mean where it's like oh, yeah. everything it's goes never. where <laughs> everything goes smoothly it's like more the way that it's like in my house where i'm like yeah you know i'm like where's that stupid wrench where did i put that and like why isn't this fitting you know what i mean and you're like troubleshooting like all right let's go back yeah. through this let me follow this brake line all the way back to the lever like what in the hell is going on here and yeah. so it's fun just watching watching you guys build like a, like a normal group of dudes just building a bike the way that it actually happens um yeah you know and and it's just fun to watch dude and it's it's not because here's what i like about it i know i'm not just going to sit down and watch you build a bike from start to finish it's going to be like today we're going to get some stuff done we don't know how much we may get nothing done <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. but i'm here yeah. to watch it and yeah. it's it's just it's a it's just a relaxing way to just hang out with some friends that like you know, everyone like people are going to run into you. You you saw I saw this with you guys at Dirty Fest, and it's one of those things. People run in, they're like, "Hey, what's up, bros?" Because we feel like we all know you. Yeah, um, you well, and same Bernie, thing with you. Know you. I mean? We we feel like we know you. Yeah. And, you know, so it was really natural when we saw each other at Dirty Fest. It was just like it, it's like we were bros from when we were kids. You know, that's we're hanging I love that. out and yeah. talking and just you know, yeah. I mean, we it's it, it's this this whole process has been a little un, uneasy in the in the sense that like so my background is um, I was a um, teacher in a, I was a middle school teacher um, I just retired after thirty one and a half years of teaching but most of that time was teaching digital media so 
the skills, like as far as like knowing how to use a mic and using cameras and stuff, that was easy, right? And I speak in front of the class every single day. So me speaking to a camera or speaking to students, not, not much different, right? So I'm super comfortable in being in front of the camera, but I'm used to like, I want stuff, you know, looking good. I want the audio to be good. I want the video to be good. And it's, you know, like, and, and so in the beginning, I was like, do I, do I want to make the, the thing really polished and, you know, almost, you know, with the light. And, and it was like, I had to take a step back and like, nah, let's just be us, you know, let's just be how we normally are. And we make mistakes and we don't pretend to be the best mechanics because we're not, you know, we'll tell you straight up from the beginning, like if you're here for quality mechanic content, this is not us. But if you're here to hang out, like you said, and listen to two old friends, you know, rip it up about just stuff in the past, tease each other, work on the bike, work through the problems, experience the problems and figure out how to how to, how to work out, how to get past them, then that's what we're here for. And so I think that's connected, like you said, like a lot of people have told us that, that they just feel like, ah, it's just kind of cool just hanging out with you guys in the garage. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um. So like looking at, at your content, so you, you're, you're working with some brands, like I've, I've seen you guys working with like Monza. So it kind of took yeah. off really well for you. Like what are the brand, like who have you worked with so far? Like as far as yeah, like, you know, and it, what was it, it was, like for you? What, did, how did that feel? Cause I, I remember dude, what it felt like me the first time someone reached out to me and it's yeah. like, Hey, I'd, I'd yeah. love to, I'd love to give you a part for your bike, you know? And I'm like, yeah. wait, what? Tell me what it's like for you guys. What was that whole process? Like? I think this is a perfect thing to tell people that are thinking of starting a channel because, you know, like I've I would have kids that were like, oh, I just want to be a YouTuber when I grow up. I'm like, but it's a lot of work, right? What people don't realize is that it takes a while for you to get enough people to follow you, right? And to watch your stuff before anybody even notices you, right? So I just started putting videos out. I knew that. I knew that coming in, that it was going to be a grind to get to a thousand subscribers, right? And I was, in some ways, unfortunately, a little obsessed. You know, I'm checking my freaking page every day. I'm like, okay, did I gain anybody, right? And then, um, because you need to get to that, you know, 1,000. I think now it's like 500 maybe to, to get monetized in somehow, but it was like 1,000, right? And you needed like 4,000 watch hours. And I would get the watch hours. I just didn't have enough subs. So in the beginning, it was like just, you know, grinding, right? Putting out a video every week until you can kind of get to a point where, hey, at least you can get something back for that work, right? And I didn't start it to make money. I didn't, I didn't you know, none of us, I think, are doing this for the money or for free parts or whatever. We're doing it to share our passion, but it's still good to get something a little back so that it can help you. It's a goal. Make it out 30 fest, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a goal. When I, when I started mine, it was, it was literally like it being be, like being a, a YouTube creator was like never on a radar ever. Yeah. I mean, Me I neither. was like, that's, that's for those people. Like that's, I didn't even tell my students that I was on no. YouTube. Because I, I didn't want to get trolled, you know, by my students, like watching my video. So I told nobody, like I started yeah. my channel and I literally told no one. I didn't post it on my personal Facebook. I mm -mm. didn't put it in my personal Instagram. I wanted to grow my audience you know, organically, I wanted people that were there because they wanted to be there for whatever we were talking about. I didn't want it to because it's friends that are just feeling sad for me. <laughs> I didn't want to be 100%. 100%. <laughs> you know? I did the same thing because I work at a tech company, right? And so like a, a lot of that, like I'm very, I'm very familiar with like engagement and followers and all of yeah. that because that was part of my job was, was influencer marketing. And so I was like, there's no way I'm I'm going to even tell anybody in this company right. that, that I'm doing this thing about my BMX passion because I didn't want to say, I didn't want pity follows. I didn't want like yeah, same. that kind of a thing. I was like, I, I, for me personally, I needed every single follow to be someone that, that did it without me asking, you know, I, that, Absolutely. I don't know why that was big. Maybe it's our age. I don't know. I, I think kids today are way better about I think it. Yeah. 
I think it's more authentic, right? Like we're not trying to buy anybody's attention or love or whatever. We're just doing something that we really enjoy. And so that for me, that was important. So, and also I, like I said, like I'm in a middle school and middle school kids can be really mean and rough. Right. And so I was like, I am not going to give them any ammunition to shoot it back in my face later on. Like I could be the guy that scolds a kid, right? Cause, cause I'm, I was strict. And so I wouldn't want them to then turn around and be like posting stuff. Oh, look at Mr. M. He's like, look, at look. And then posting like ugly shots or me doing something. So I was just like, nah, man. <laughs> Not going to mess with it. I agree, man. A hundred percent. I'm right there with you. Um, So what was, what was it like? Like the, like, yeah. do you remember your first month? When was your, what was yeah. your first like milestone moment when you, when you started your channel? What was like your like, oh, okay. I think. You know, and yeah, to get back to your question about what was it like, you know, to get that that first person to, to reach out, I think probably like when we hit the thousand was like, I kind of just felt like, oh, OK, awesome. Right now I can kind of monetize some stuff and then more people are seeing the videos. Right. And then what happened was I did a we, we shot a video in Bernie's at Bernie's house and my friend Flo bought a Monza and it was like at that time Monza was like during the pandemic they had like this big order thing but it took months right because of the shipping delays and everything that that the pandemic brought right so those crates dude they were on yeah the, they, were they were just the sitting there forever. yeah so he finally got his Monza it was a 26 in black he brought it over to Bernie's house to show to show us both and I was like dude can I just shoot let, let me do a bike check video on this on this you know on, on your new bike and so we just sat in his yard and, and luckily for us, it was like the evening, right? The sun was coming down. There was just a nice real glow to the sky. And I just shot in in the backyard with my GoPro. And I just, we just sat there and I, we, you know, we talked about the parts, looked at the stuff and it was a simple, like, I don't think it was even more than 10 minutes long. It was like just a short video, but I tagged Monza in it and like, you know, and they reached out and they were like, we love the video. We love what you guys did with that video. Are you interested in doing more? And I was like, heck yeah. Like, you know, so then I met Flo on another day at the at the um, uh, bike path that's near the ocean. And I shot a vertical video for them, put together some stuff, put it to music, whatever, posted it. And they're like, we love it. Can we hire you guys to shoot more content for us? And I was like, yeah. So um, contacted a friend of mine, John, that that teaches at a, at a program on a wall, who's one of the most creative guys that I know flew him over to the island for a weekend and we just shot a bunch of stuff videos of me riding pictures you know all this stuff that that monzo you know was looking for and then sent it over to them and so now like if you go to the monzo website like you'll see me on there <laughs> like yeah. i'm on their front page and you know they repost our stuff and monzo has just been fantastic with just being someone who they, they just support the the creators, the small guys like us, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah, they sent me my first bike and I couldn't believe it. I was like, you know, telling my wife, like these guys are like, this company is going to send me a free bike. I don't even have to give it back, you know? Right. And so right. And since then they've sent us, you know, multiple bikes. And now we just had the 27 and a half that just came out. And we were like the first people to get our hands on it. And Matt at the Nostalgic Neighborhood, he's he's the second guy that got the the other color, and um, they've just been really really good to us. And so you know we we are we're, we're thankful because they even sent us to um, a bike show in Texas, you yeah. know, a couple of years ago. We went yeah. to um, you know um, this this the Texas BMX Roundup, and they they footed our bill for us to go there to represent Monza to show the bikes and sell some bikes. And they've been fantastic. So it's been awesome to be able to get stuff. But yeah, in the beginning, right, any little thing that people are throwing your way, you're like grabbing at it because it's like, oh, someone's going to give me a free shirt. OK, I can make a video or I can oh, like whatever. But then it's like uh, you kind of pimp yourself out a little bit in the beginning, I feel, because you're just trying yeah. to, you know, you're like, oh, someone's going to give me something for free. All right. Yeah, I'll do whatever. And then you start realizing, wait, they're getting way more on the deal than I am. And so um, there have been other brands that have asked for stuff. And then so I've turned around and said, OK, well, yeah, you know, but what what else can you, you do besides just giving me the product? Because my video will live forever right up on the you can send people there forever. But then if you're giving me a T-shirt, 
that's really not, right. you know, I'm not equal in, in, in the whole thing, but I'm also trying not to be like, I don't want to be that like person that will then just ask for money everywhere. I'm not, I'm not, you know, like I, I always, I look at things as like a partnership. So like billet BMX, right. That They're, they're a good example. Like billet. Um, I just love their stuff. And then he reached out and we just became friends and then, you know, so, so there are things that we do for each other, but it's not like, um, it's not like a full sponsorship, you know, it's not like we're getting just all free stuff. It's, it's definitely, we, we, we get support, but I feel like I got to put into it too. Right. So I always tell people, it's like, it's like, I, I look at it as like, it's a give and take thing, right? Like you allowing me to do stuff with you and your parts creates content for me. And then if I can help you, then then let's figure out a way to work together, you know. And so that's how it's kind of been. I just, I you know, I, but I'm just real. I'm trying not to be that person that was like, you know, here's my rate card. You want to do like I'm open to anybody, you know, and I and I look at it more as a partnership than me, you know, doing a job for a client, you know. But right. yeah, it's, it's super cool now because I just we do have we I just got I reached um, another company reached out evolve i don't know if you heard of their brand they, they do skateboards and stuff but they built a bmx bike an electric one and they're sending me a bike and oh, it should be cool. like monday and that thing yeah. is killer like that thing is really cool and same thing they're like you know hey we love what you guys are doing can we send you a bike to review it and then you guys can keep the bike and i'm like yeah for yeah that's cool like that's let's go you know so yeah that's awesome, dude. I love that. Uh, I think Craig and I, we got linked up with like people right, like right away where it's like, okay, yeah, like night bike right? They're mm. like, Hey, we're putting together a team and uh, you know, like, Hey, we'll, we'll hook you up with, with parts for your PK. I was like, perfect, man. That's amazing. You know, what, what is that's it? That's a hard know? part. Right. And then you were with SE for a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. so, so SE was cool. SE was absolutely cool about Todd. Todd didn't care if like you rode, you, you know, you rode the bike stock for a couple months. And then afterwards, if you started upgrading parts yeah. with like your, your co-sponsors or other people, then it was totally yeah. fine. So, you know, like, that's why you'll see people like Matt Rickard, uh, Damon, like they'll have night bike stuff yeah. on their bikes and stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's the weird part about like being an influencer. Influencer. Like, yeah. I hate yeah. that. I, you know, like for me, I, I ride bikes and I tell my friends about parts. Like that's what we've always done since the eighties. And you know, that's, that's really what it is, but yeah, dude, it's, it's just a wild thing. Like for me, I think my first goal was to get monetized. Like you guys, like, was just like, that was something easy. I could check in every day just to see like, where's my progress. Mm -hmm. You know, that, yep. that thermometer bar, you know, that yeah. goes up, you know, and yeah. you're like, I'm close. I'm close. Yeah. 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 I, I did yeah. the same thing. Cause we were, we were, I think for us, when we did it, when I started big bike BMX, I think you had to have 2000 followers and some ungodly amount of watch hours and yeah, like I, I i researched it and people are like the watch hours are like that's going to take you about a year and i was like okay but we we were doing interviews at the time craig and mm. i you know we like so the watch hours people would watch like the todd lyons the whole thing right yeah the, the horror interviews and just they wanted to see about the new bikes and things like that so but the watch hours were done in three three months probably but mm. getting people to subscribe, like, hey, you know, come back and watch another one of these. You know, that was the exactly. hardest part. That took the longest, you know. And the and the other hard part for me is always, you know, at where you got to ask people to like, like and sub, you know, yeah. like. So I only do that at the very, very end, like if you make it. So most people don't even hear that, right? If they don't watch my video to the end. But I try not to be like, you know, a like and subscribe, you know, whore where I'm just like. <laughs> You know, do this, do this for me. Like, I try, I mean, I get it because that's that's what drives the algorithm. That what drives, you know, people to, you know, YouTube to push your stuff out. I just always feel, un, you know, I just feel uncomfortable asking, you know, hey, can you please, you know. My advice, so, my advice, yeah. bro, put it put it <laughs> at the beginning and put it at the end. I, I was the yeah. same way. I, I would always put a thing. Like if you watch our old interviews or a lot of our old episodes, like at the very end, I'm like, if you made it this far, you've, you know, yeah. if you've watched this to this point, like you're probably gonna like everything we do. Go ahead and subscribe now. Um, and I felt comfortable doing that. You know what I mean? Cause I was like, Hey bro, like it's just like yeah. a bro moment. Like, yeah, Hey, let's, exactly. let's do this again. Exactly. Now, I will tell you like 
to be able to get to be able to, you have to play the game you have to gain that algorithm so yeah. that you get in front of more people yeah. that want to see content and that we want yeah. to talk to so it's all playing a game and honestly i think at this point i think our audience on youtube understands this because you know you got to understand they're not just watching you and i they're watching yeah. oh Mr. yeah B. They're watching everybody they're, else they're watching yeah. all these famous people that are like hey welcome to my channel here's here's all the places you can follow me here's you know, like, and subscribe for more. And then they get into the video and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's acceptable. I mean, that's just what you do. So, you know, if uh, my advice to you say at the beginning and my advice to you, if you're start, if, if this motivates you and I, I believe Kevin, and I both hope this motivates you to start your own channel. Absolutely. Um, because we all want more BMX content. Don't be afraid to ask for, con for, don't be afraid to ask for interviews. Don't, don't ever be afraid to ask somebody to come on your show. And don't be afraid to ask people to subscribe or like, don't, don't yeah. be afraid of that. Or so even just starting, like, you know, I never, ever thought I would be doing a YouTube. I mean, I've always liked the idea of one, but I'm like, I got to have something that I want to share. And like my whole life was teaching, right? Like I taught for, for 30 years, 31 years. And it was like, okay, I could make a teaching one, but then like, ah, I don't know, who am I going to like, you know? And then so when this BMX stuff came out, this big bike BMX stuff, it was like, OK, this this is my niche. Right. Because you got to have that niche on YouTube. You got to be able to, like, you know, have that subject that other people are interested in. And, you know, finding people like you was that was motivation for me because I'm like, look, if if Isaac can sit in his garage, you know, with his phone and he's or his GoPro and he's shooting some stuff. And it's a, you know, it's a simple install video and it's, there's not a lot of flash to it, but it's just authentic. It's just he, him just showing you how to do something like then I can do that, you know? And so that's kind of like how, why, why I was like, okay, let me, that gave me the courage to, to do it. So if you're out there, if someone is watching right now and they're like, ah, should I do it? Just do it. I mean, as long as you're okay with like, you know, you're going to get some of those negative comments. Sometimes you just got to kind of let them go. That just is part of the whole game. But, you know, if you have something to share and you want to share it with everyone else, then I say go for it. You yeah. Know? Here's your second tip. Now we're going, since we're doing tips here, I'm going to give you one more tip if you're starting out. Um, I, I know I felt it. I felt the most extreme imposter syndrome when I started my channel because for me, I'm like, who the fuck am I to be out here? <laughs> Yeah. offering any advice to anybody you know what i mean no, like because <laughs> yeah. literally when i sit down to record and i'm like hey what's up you guys the in the back of my mind there's that angel saying like you're gonna help somebody find a new part that's dope but then there's yeah. a devil on your shoulder that's even louder that's going no one cares what you think about anything dude like you're just, <laughs> yeah you you're gotta just, ignore that side you gotta listen just... tattooed santa claus yeah. you're not very you're not as cool <laughs> And no one cares what you have to say about this. Uh, brand oh, new man. So you will have imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. Just, here's, here's the thing. Just make a video. If you if you are an expert on anything, and even if you're yeah. not an expert, you have a personality. You have a passion. People will watch your passion. Yeah. Uh, Corey Feldman is a perfect yeah. example of this. Like, my guy is on tour with Limp Biscuit <laughs> and can't play music saves life. But he's out there yeah. doing it, and there are people screaming for him. And we're over here like, go for Corey Feldman. Yeah. yeah. So trust me, <laughs> like Corey Feldman. If Corey was, can do it and look like Corey, what he does. If Corey can tour with Limp Biscuit, you can make a goddamn YouTube video and start a channel. <laughs> guys. So do it. We need yeah. more BMX. So no, what's so what has been what has been like? Uh, I would say like your, your some of your favorite moments from the from your channel and from what you've done okay. that, that yeah that and basically what i want to know, like what are some videos that that people watching this now when they're done with our interview can go and say i want to watch that video kevin talked about what are some of your highlight videos oh that's a life? good question that's a good question oh i'm gonna have to think about that one um i can what what i can say though because i it's gonna be hard for me to 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 think of something like that but what i can say is that you know, like the best thing that's come out of this, this channel has, has just been the friendships that I've made. And even though they're virtual friendships, right? Like a lot of people, like I'll just message on, 
on Instagram or in my in the comment section of, of my YouTube videos. But I, I really feel, and I think you touched on this earlier, where like we can go to like a bunch of different cities, pull up in a city, and someone will loan us a bike and we'll be able to ride with with the crew in that city just yep. because they've connected with us through a video. You know, I really feel that. And and yeah, maybe we ha I haven't met everybody in person and I hope to meet a lot of people in person. It's that's been the that's been the coolest thing. And then going to Dirty Fest. Oh, my God. Like going to Dirty Fest and being able like you and I met there at the, at the you know, for the first time. And it, like I said, it felt like we were old friends. Right. But then we just got to meet people like, you know, Bob Harrow. Right. And we did an interview with him. I remember leaving like we, we finished the interview with Bob and then we went to the car for something. And I was like giddy like a schoolgirl with walking with Bernie. I was like, holy shit, we just interviewed freaking Bob Harrow. Like we were just so excited, right? It was like, oh my God, like meeting like our, our, you know, this person that we looked up to as a kid, you know, and having and and him being nice enough to like, you know, at, listen to us and answer our questions and just be so generous with his time, like. It was just, you know, really humbling and really just, you know, it just shows you this, the, the the power of this community, right? This BMX community, it's small, right? We're not like, you know, like some other communities where where it's like millions and millions of people, but the community that we have, it, they're really passionate about, about things. And they're super friendly, like everybody that we met, you know, at Dirty Fest just welcomed us with, with open arms. You know, we talked to Eddie Fiola, right? Got a chance to, you know, talk to him and and Bill. Oh my God, it's super cross. Like that guy's amazing, right? Cool we guy, just, right? Yeah. Oh, super <laughs> cool guy. And you know, yeah. you you helped us kind of get in touch with him. And like he was just such a nice guy and and so thankful to kind of also be able to, you know, to talk to him and get to know him. And just the whole BMX community has just has just been fantastic. And so I think that's where we're really fortunate. Like this channel has just widened our horizon, you know, got us to see different people like Bernie, like Bernie in high school, never really talked to a lot of people like, you know, kind of quiet, but with our group, you know, super funny, yeah. you know, outgoing, but he doesn't like go to class reunions. He doesn't like to hang out with a bunch of people. And I'm so stoked to see him, you know, kind of embrace this, this, you know, this, this side too, where he's just like cracking jokes and he's like just being outgoing and like it's just it's been so fun and I think that to me has been the best part of it. I don't know yeah. if I can point to a specific video because we have so many different videos, right? We got like stuff we're talking about parts and then sometimes we're just riding and then sometimes we're you know putting together a bike. Um, yeah, it's just the whole experience has just been awesome. Yeah, I will. I will tell you if you if you're looking for. If you're just starting out and this is maybe the first or second time you've heard about Kevin and Bernie and Cruising 808, my advice, go watch the build videos because that is the most bro moments and it is so pure and authentic and just fun to watch these fellas talk about bikes and parts. And it is so, I think we've all had those moments, Kevin, where you're like, I just got some new handlebars and you just hold them and you're like yeah. looking at them yeah. and you're like, yes. I, I can't wait to put be. these suckers I on. I know what this is going to feel like. And yeah. watching you guys like lay out the parts and like, this is what we're going to put on and hearing you debate about them. Like, oh, you should have got these or these are going to be great. Um, oh, like I love when we run stuff. into problems, right? Like we run into problems all the time. Like that, that freaking Skyway bike, for whatever reason, just gave us so many problems, like with the bottom bracket and the headset, and all this kind of stuff. So it, it was just... You know, and then we just like, honestly, I don't feel like some people will film the intro to their video at the end so that they know exactly what what happened and what to talk about. We don't. We film the intro before we do anything. So we don't even know what's going to happen. Right? right. And we, we we encounter a lot of problems. That's but everybody <laughs> does. And that's what's great. about Everybody it. That's does. Fun. Yeah. And we've never tried to like, OK, we're going to stop the video and like make it look like, you know, we know what we're doing like. There are a lot of times, like even with freaking brakes, right? Brakes can be, there's so many things that you can adjust, right? You can adjust the the little knob up by the lever, yeah. right? You can adjust the tension of the cable, and then you got the tension of the of the springs and all this kind of stuff. 
And like, we don't work on, you know, parts every single, every single day. Right. So like, we're always like, oh crap, what did we, how do we, how do we adjust that again? You know, so I was there with you. Pretty yeah. stupid, right. But it's like, I don't know, as a 55 year old dude, that's going, that's working on some stuff that happens. Like you just forget. And like, we, we just go with it is what it is. Yeah. You know? Well, here's the thing, man. If you think about it, I mean, for me, this, my, my, you know, my transition into big bikes, I was a flatland freestyle guy, right? So I, I could build parts from, let's say up to maybe mid school, right? So mm. nine, nine nineties and, and, yeah. you know, V like U brakes and things like that dialed, man. I, I jump in and I buy a big bike in 20, 2019. And I'm like, what V brake, this is new for me. Um, yeah. You know, how do you Euro bottom you, brackets? What is this? what? Yeah, I was like, it threads in. You screw it in. What? Now, yeah. now I can't imagine not having a Euro bottom bracket because I'm like, man, pressing, <laughs> getting a bottom bracket press, right? The press sucks. and making sure everything's lined up and all that stuff and like, yeah, I, totally. dude. Now just screw it in. <laughs> it takes me ten minutes to put new cranks on. It's amazing. It, it, it takes you 10 minutes if the threads are good. Yeah. We've just run across, I don't know what it is. Like just we've just had problems with threads yeah. lately, just not being, you know, I don't know, true. And so, the, like uh, the advice I had for you, you guys are already doing it, but put the spindle in, like get one in, then yeah. you put the axle in, and yeah. then it should line up pretty good. And I just go, yeah, what I do is I go backwards until I feel I pre I hold it with tension into the bottom bracket. Yeah. with the axle so i know it's true and i go backwards until i feel a pop and then I, i'll start to go forward and mm. as long as i can continue to go with just hand tension i know yeah. i'm not cross-threaded takes 20 Smart. minutes sometimes i mean yeah. you'll be out there like am i is am i doing did i put the cup on the other side like why is this not oh. going bernie is I all will... he's like all the time he's like okay wait which side is which yeah <laughs> It's, people might must look at us and like these dummies they don't they they build all these bikes and they still can't remember what side goes into what but i don't know <laughs> it's i don't know it, to tell you <laughs> so and here's the thing they're not all the same like profile will tell yeah. you this is l left side and thread it this way they're like you guys are dumb and i know this so i'm gonna print it on there for you yeah yeah yeah. then yeah, you yeah. got people like maybe mary or theory and they just they do like what they do with a pedal so like Drive side might have like that line engraved. Oh, the line the, thing. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. Like they yeah. do on the pedal, like on a pedal spindle. And you're, but it's not universal. So it's not no. like every single brand does yeah. the same way. So yeah, yeah, I do. I feel that. But yeah, getting, yeah. getting, getting the, the, uh, the ramp up to like some of the new technology was so interesting to me to figure that out. Like the springs on the side of a, a V brakes, like screwing those yeah. in and out. And I'm like, okay. If I screw this side in, it moves that way. Okay, that I get yeah. it. All right, so let me screw all. Let me take these screws all the way out. Let me just start adding a little bit of tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch yeah. which way it goes, and then so it's it's just trial and error and tinkering, and yeah. I love it because like here in Arizona, dude, like summertime, it's like a buck twenty outside, which means it's oh. probably like a buck forty in my garage because I'm not gonna pay. I'm not the type of person that's gonna pay for yeah. a, an air conditioner for a garage. <laughs> Like I have kids that need clothes. So like, that's right. not a luxury I have. So yeah. most of my videos are filmed at like one in the morning when it's only like a hundred degrees, <laughs> you know, and I'm out there just sweating my ass right. off. <laughs> yeah. Funny. But, the funny one we had was like, we used the billet BMX, um, their, their headset, you know, the, the spacers the cap. Right? Oh yeah. But it was a cap, but it was like, it's it, you know how like, um, so when you have forks that have, you know, no star nut and sometimes you got to add the star nut yourself, right? Yeah. So that the, the stem has Press something. Press it down. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the Billet BMX one is interesting because it has kind of like these coils that when you, when you clamp down, the coils expand and that's how it locks in instead of a thread, instead of a star nut. Right. But right. when we got it, like it had the cap. And we didn't realize there was another freaking screw underneath that that we had to also tighten, you right. know. So we're like, ah, like just how come this thing is not getting tight, you know? And then right. it 
dawned on us, well, dummies, they take off the cap and then you can see the other screw that is the one that's actually providing the tension for the for the fork. And I'm like, you know, but that stuff happens sometimes. And you'll see it on our channel and we won't, you know, we laugh at ourselves, we make fun of ourselves and it's just part of our life. yeah a hundred percent dude and that's that's what makes i think that's what really just makes it so endearing it's like it's just real dudes working on bikes and we love that you know what i mean like who didn't hang out at a bike shop and watch mechanics build bikes back in the 80s we all Right. did we all we all sat there watched them work on brakes asked to see Yeah. the 25 cent sticker book you know let me see your sticker book And you know what I mean? Like you're just being there trying to buy like the, <laughs> you know, That's my the mom. only thing we could afford is a Yeah. sticker. And if I get, if I get the dude doing the like flip off, I'm going to get in trouble by my mom, but like, I really Yeah, wanted yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So No, I, I totally remember that those days. Yeah. what, what do you, what does the future look like for you and Bernie? What do you, what, what is, what is the next, like, if you had like, what are your next goals? What is, what is going to, be the next uh check mark in your in your success uh totem that you're like man if when i get to this this is gonna it's gonna feel great what I don't can know. we do to help help get you to your next level We we haven't we've never really talked about any of that stuff. Like I started the channel, right? So I was the one that like I want to share my stuff, right? So I created everything. Um, you know, I shot the videos, edited them, and then we, same thing. When, so when when we brought Bernie on board, right? Same thing. I'm just I'm we're shooting everything, and I'm I'm the one that puts everything together, right? Um, but I really feel like it's our channel, even though it's something that I created just because he's such a big part of it. Right. And so I always feel like it's ours, but we've never, I don't know. We've never talked about like, Oh, where do we want to go? And like, you know, like, I think we're just happy doing what we're doing. It's nice to see the subscriber count, you know, grow. It's, it's really slow though. Like it's like, you know, we, we don't see, you know, massive, massive numbers, But we're at the point where more people are seeing it now, which is really cool. We're getting we're getting, you know, more comments and now we can count on like, you know, X amount of viewers seeing it within the first you know week or so, which is nice. Um, I don't know. I think I would just love for us to be able to travel more, you know, like there's all these events, right? You just had Frogtown. The old school BMX reunion is coming up like next week, I think, you know, Yeah. and Dirty Fest and like. You know, you just have all these great events that that's what I would love for us to be able to do more of is to be able to, you know, generate enough, you know, income in which it's just helping us with the travel. Because for us, traveling is just always going to be expensive, right? Even for us just to come to Dirty Fest, we're paying, you know, five, six hundred dollars just for airfare. And then that's not the car. That's not the hotel and any of that other stuff. So. A trip is is kind of pricey for us. And then, you know, Bernie's working so much Right. in his job, doesn't have a ton of time off. And so trying to figure out like, okay, how do how does he do his family trips? And then how do we do our trips? Like that part is the is the hardest thing. And I think traveling would be more fun because we just had a blast, like Dirty Fest. Like we spent a week in California. So we hit up Dirty Fest first, right? Talk to all these people, all other people like like Damian Fulton, Right. like that guy's awesome as well, right? Got to talk to all these people, but then we stayed a couple extra days, and then we visited like some of the bike shops. So you know, Yeah, we checked I saw out you guys, Frank. Frank's. Yeah, Yeah. checked out that stacked. We went to Frank's, and so like we just had fun, just being able to kind of you know see some stuff. So we definitely want are gonna head back to Dirty Fest. Like we've already like while we were in Dirty Fest, we said. Frick yeah, I don't care when, what it's going to take next year, we're coming back, right? Yep, yep. I'm kind of bummed that it's in June, though. I got to say, like, I'm not not super stoked on that date, only because there's all this other stuff right now that's also coming, you know, um, around that time. And I kind of felt like that was a, April was a good time for it, even though it rained. The rain sucks. And I, and I totally understand Mike not, Mike not wanting to have it where it's, you know, have it in a, a time frame when it when it's not raining. But... Yeah, we're gonna we're we're making plans to go to Dirty Fest, but I would love to go to Frogtown. I would love to go to the Hall of Fame. Like they have the Hall of Fame this weekend, right? Is that big thing that everyone's that a bunch of people are at? Uh, I think I'm waiting for Damien to get in. Like I really, I'm really crossing my fingers that Damien's gonna get in there. 
soon. And I think if he does that, then that's gonna, that's gonna get me to, to kind of go so I can kind of help document that. Cause we've yeah. talked about, you know, with Damon, when, when we met him in a dirty fest about helping him with, with some stuff that he wants to do. And I think that'd be really cool to like be able to document, you know, and I would love for, for him to get in there. So if anyone, I don't know who votes for that stuff, but Damien's got to get in there at some point yeah. like that that dude what he's brought to BMX and the the lives of all the kids that loved radical Rick and looking at his cartoons and you know wishing they could be they could be him you know like he's done so much for the sport for such a long time that I think he it's just going to be a matter of time before he gets in there you know yeah I love that I just bought a poster of his uh Supercross he did a 35 year um Supercross poster uh and it's it's not it's great dude like bill he he drew bill so now bill is like yeah i saw that and i missed that did that did that came that came out already it came out this morning yeah it dropped this morning and they're they have they have two different versions of it. they have one for like 30 bucks and they have one for like that's on crazy good paper and and signed and numbered and stamped with his like radical rick stamp um and those i think are 100 bucks um Hmm. and you know it's it's literally like just a cool limited edition print it's it's a yeah. great piece of art um uh, but yeah I, I i love damien like his his that jacket that he had at dirty fest was ridiculous yeah. like his sharpie, his sick, sharpie. Yeah. like he basically you guys he had a, a white jean jacket a denim jacket and then yeah. he drew tattooed sleeves on it of just panels yeah. of radical rick all the way down his his jacket in sharpie uh yeah i mean he was color fading i just can't believe i don't know how he does it yeah. it's amazing the guy's but, amazing um yeah dude i i you guys go over follow cruising in 808 follow them give them a like give them a subscribe make sure you follow them on instagram it's all cruising in 808 on youtube and in in uh yeah. on on instagram follow yeah. them if you see kevin and bernie out do not hesitate to go over and hang out say what's up chit chat with them and uh follow along fo- like in yeah. any time the other thing you can do is anytime you see a brand uh, you know, reaching out and using them to help get spread the word. Comment, like, uh, and and send them a note, man. Go comment on that brand's Instagram and be like, thank you for using Kevin and Bernie for your promotion. Um, because here's the thing: these brands could go and grab and spend big money to promote, like grabbing the latest greatest superstar, but they're yeah. not. They're actually using yeah. people like you and I and Kevin and Bernie and yeah. Like it, they're, they're using creators to get this out there. And so support that, man. They're, they're, they're reaching people where they're at. And so that's, that's the beauty of like the internet. Right. And yeah. the beauty, the, the other thing is that, that, you know, we've kind of touched on, it's just when we were kids, it was so localized because, you know, like you said, you had your, you had your click over here in this city and your click over here in this city. You're all on the same Island. You're all riding different spots, but you're all traveling yeah. to each other's spots. And the same thing is happening now on the internet, which is beautiful. Like you and I can connect and have that mm-hmm. same, you know, Hey, what's Kevin doing today? Like literally I woke up this morning yeah. uh, and was like, Hey man, what are you doing today? You want to jump on? And he's like, yeah, let's go. Same thing that would have happened in 1987 if I'm like, where are you riding today? I'll meet you at the gym. Dialing, dialing the phone. Yeah, and just please, <laughs> please <laughs> let a brother or sister <laughs> answer <laughs> the phone. Please don't let it be mom or dad. And then they're like, is Kevin yeah. there? Yeah. You know, and like Kevin's <laughs> Kevin's grounded. Uh, yeah. And, don't, and I was grounded back in yeah. the day. <laughs> Kevin's grounded and don't you dare call after seven o'clock. Oh, man. Click, you know, like, but that's the internet has given us that ability <laughs> to like, st- like, link up with friends that are like-minded that are in the same part of their yeah, journey. Absolutely. And you know, the, the internet is big, man. And so like, whether you're a, uh, a writer, whether you're a content creator, whether you're a bike designer, whether you're a bike brand, whether you just want to start out, you're, you're an anodizer, you're a, mm-hmm. you're a powder coat person. Everybody has a place here and everybody has, there's exposure for you. So yeah, you know, I guess if if you're watching this this now, I hope you've got a little bit of motivation to understand that you don't have to be there's no there's no starting point that you have to achieve in your personal life before you start your own YouTube. Absolutely. Wherever you're at in your journey, just make a video, put it online. Um, and if this is what you need a phone. Do. 
You just need yeah. you can't really see it, but you just need a yeah. phone, right? Like our, our the things in our pockets now can do everything to get a video out online, right? You can record yourself. You can have you have software Easy. on your phone that can edit it. You can put it out there, and it doesn't take much. And like for me, if I'm somebody in my fifties that started a freaking YouTube channel, then anybody. <laughs> I feel like anyone else can can start something. Bro, seriously. So, I started yeah. with I did the same thing exactly. I my very first video was me and it's kind of like really it's it's the the ethos of my channel. It's bro, I found you guys like I was making videos about restoring my H1 Hummer. Like I had an H1 mm. Humvee and I was like my my original thing was like I would just make videos so I could document like I got my dream truck. Here I yeah. am fixing it up. And that's what I was doing on my YouTube channel. And it wasn't, I wasn't, and it, I literally just wanted to have videos because my hard drive was full. So I was like, I'm just gonna put the videos of the Hummer up on YouTube. No one's going to care. I don't promote it. I don't yeah. talk about it. And then uh, I was like, randomly, I got a, a big ripper for Christmas. And I was like, you guys, BMX bikes now fit my big broken body. And I think at the time <laughs> I probably weighed like 270. And I was like, dude, I'm going to go, I'm just, this is it, dude. I don't have to have spandex mountain bike because I live in Arizona, yeah. dude. And mountain bikes are everywhere here, like, like Hawaii, right? Oh yeah. So mountain bikes, mountain bike, like Trek tests their bikes, like down the road from me. That's the like, oh. testing ground for Trek. So mountain bikes are everywhere. And I'm like, that's just not me. Road bikes are just angry dentists to me. They're angry all the time. <laughs> and so I don't. I don't understand the joy of like road cycling. I know people love it, but oh. man, when you see them riding, they're so mad at you all the time. They're mad at everybody. So I was like, that's not me. And you know, I found a, I found like, I went in, I was literally buying bikes for my kids for Christmas. And there's a red line 27.5. And I was like, mm. what is that? And they're like, that's a, it's a big BMX bike. I was like, say more words, oh. salesperson. They make you know? that now, right? I was like, let me ride it. And so I go out and I like pop a wheelie and I was like, oh yeah, my wife freaks out. Right. My kids are like, what? And I, then I, <laughs> Don't I did bring the bike dad. <laughs> yeah. And I, I did an endo and I was like, and my wife was like, who are, what is this? I was like, yeah, you started bikes when I was a kid. We just haven't, I never talked about it with my wife, you know, mm, interesting. She's like, she, she'd seen a couple of like trophies that I had at my mom's house, yeah, you know? And, and yeah. she, I was just like, she's like, oh, and I was like, these are so fun. And so like for Christmas, she's, you know, she's like, I want to buy you a, a BMX bike. I was like, babe, that's awesome. And it, that that's what kicked it off for me. So I'm literally in front of my house. I grab a, like a camping chair, set it down. I put my iPhone on the door handle of my minivan <laughs> to prop it up. And I'm like, no tripod, nothing, nothing. I have no, I yeah. had nothing. And I was just like, yeah. Hey, bros, I just found out that you can get a BMX bike that fits your grown ass body. This is amazing. <laughs> it's called a Big Ripper. It's like the PK Ripper we always wanted. I, I made a 10 minute video just talking like, look yeah. at this, you guys, this is crazy. And my whole goal was like, maybe someone like me that used to race in the 80s in Flatland, right? They would see this yeah. and go, you don't have to ride a, a angry dentist road bike or a mountain bike. You don't have to wear <laughs> spandex. Yeah, make BMX bikes for us. Yeah. And I was like, this is amazing. And so like, I started riding my bike to work. That was like, I was like, dude, I, I work like five miles down the road. So it was like five mile down, down a path, five mile back. And it was yeah. amazing, dude. I lost a ton of weight and I was like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. So I just kept making videos like, Hey, this, I went and yeah. bought some new handlebars for this bike. This is what I bought, you know? And, yeah. and I linked up with Sean from Phoenix bike company. And, uh, you know, he's a great mechanic. That was also amazing. In, old he's an old bmx so i was like dude this is a match made in heaven i was like so every weekend i would just go down and hang out at the bike shop and say what can we talk about today you know and that's yeah. that's the origins of my channel and yeah it was great dude so you guys do do find your passion if you're watching this it's probably bmx and i hope you decide to create a channel and yeah talk about what makes you stoked what makes yeah. you happy and i promise you there are other people just like you my my best advice, don't worry about how many followers you end up having. Don't worry about getting monetized. Make it a goal to get there, but yeah. learn about the craft, learn about filming content and editing. You don't need a whole lot. You'll probably if you're if you have a computer, yeah. you already have a built-in editor. I used iMovie for years. 
um, yeah. and, and just my iPhone and iMovie. And so you can make all the content that you want. You don't have to have all the fancy equipment. People just want to see you and your, your stoke and your bike. Really. It's what, that's what it comes down to. So yeah, get out there and do it. <clears throat> and if there's anybody out there that is, that needs any assistance with that kind of stuff, just, just like hit me up. Like I am, I'm more than more than happy to kind of point you in the direction of, you know, different like if you want, like, let's say better audio. Right. I can I can I work with a couple of different mics. I can kind of tell you what to what to look out for. Um, you know, if you need any assistance with cameras, that kind of stuff. I'm I'm kind of like one of those like techie nerd kind of guys where I'm like. Yeah. You know, the new iPhone like excites me. I'm like watching the the keynote and I'm watching the presentation. And when the new DJI camera comes out, I'm like, oh, what kind of specs does it have? Is it good? And I'm like, I'm that person. So like if you have any questions, just hit me up on, on Instagram and uh, or drop some comments. And 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 if you ever make it out to Kauai, if let's say you come out here on vacation and you want to just ride like hit me up. Like I got extra bikes. I'm happy to take people out uh, or meet you and, and, you know, take you out on a ride. You don't have to ship your bike over. Like, you know, I got, I got lots of bikes to, 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 you know, to ride and we'd love to have you. And we, there have been a couple of people that have reached out to us. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to be on your Island. Can we go and ride? I'm like, absolutely. Just come over. And in fact, uh, Lance, our, our mutual friend, Lance at big bike BMX, he, um, or big fat, no, what is his, um, big bike family big bike big family right the the big bike, yeah. family. big bike family um he came out and same thing like he came to hawaii and reached out to me and thought i was a kid he actually thought my my that i was a, it was a it was a kid doing all this stuff right reached out to me and was like hey i kind of want to come out can i borrow a bike or can do you know anybody i can rent one from whatever so Met with him, hooked him up with my friend Elton. That's another guy that's really cool in Hawaii. His channel is Wheel Talk. Um, shout out to him. But um, he connect. We we all connected. I got a chance to sit down with Lance and had a conversation with him, and then we became friends that way. And then he came to Kauai, stayed with us for a little bit, and we you know took him around, showed him the island, and we we went riding. And he was like, "We got to do a ride here, right?" So he's trying to he's planning something for june of next year that's why i was like when when dirty fest was in june i was like oh but it's not the same time as our ride but um i think dirty fest is early june and then our ride is towards the end of june so um check out lance he has um, some information on it and yeah if anybody wants to come out uh we're gonna try to do a ride here on Kauai uh next summer that'll be fun dude yeah i, I look forward to that like if i can make it out i definitely will um I, it's the hard part is is li literally like i self-fund all my trips so like dirty fest yeah is is an expensive trip for me because i i mean yes. for me dude it's, it's like, a family like, it's a family I, too I, I travel with five bro you know what i mean like yeah. i don't i don't go by myself anywhere you know what i mean like if yeah. i'm a family guy dude so like i want my kids to experience all of the things that i'm experiencing and you know so for me dude to make it out like it's not like it's just easy to pop over um, but I, dude, I would love to, to have that experience and yeah. just have that life behind bars moment where I can get my own picture, uh, of like some yeah. handlebars with a, a beautiful beach behind it. And, uh, we'll make it happen. One of these days yeah. we'll make it happen. I'm down brother. I'm down. Well, thank you so much, dude, for, for yeah. coming out and, and sharing your knowledge and just sharing your passions. You guys follow cruising in 808. Uh, I will put a card up here that, that links to his channel. And a, a video that that I really like, I'll find one of my favorites. Probably it might be like the GT, uh, <laughs> the the because I like watching you guys work on that thing. That was fun. Like you took you took it, yeah. you powder coated it yellow. I love that. Yeah. And so like uh, yeah. I, I might just put that video up. But go follow them, like and subscribe to their videos. Follow them on Instagram. You will have an absolute blast watching Kevin and Bernie just talk about BMX, figure out parts, just like the rest of us do. It's very authentic and it's very just fun and wholesome to watch. So. Thank you for Thanks. what you're doing. Thank you for all the time you commit to yeah. BMX and uh, have some fun out there, man. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Thanks. Big shout out to Bernie. Wish he could be here. Um, that guy just works too much. So we got to get him. Yeah. Let's get him <laughs> retired. He's off let's, so we can hook up. But we are definitely talking because we yeah. definitely want you, like I mentioned to you before, we want you on the channel as well yeah. to, to kind of 
dive into your background. So we'll make that happen when once Bernie has a little bit more time. Anytime, dude. I will absolutely make time to come and chat with you guys whenever you have right. time. Yeah, perfect. So thanks for coming out. You guys, All right, man. make sure you follow, make sure you like, and uh, start your own channel if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence. If not, follow all the folks that are out there. You're only going to get cooler stuff. You'll learn some stuff. And it'll give you something to do other than, uh, you know, watch Netflix all the time. Watch watch some of your friends go bike. So have yeah. fun, you guys. We'll talk soon. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Like and like and subscribe to Big Bike BMX if you made it this far. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Yes. Hit that like button. <laughs>